map support and markdown, a dev container CLI, some retro games projects, and the open sourcing of one of the greatest apps of all time. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is a show where we cover the latest developer news of the week. I'm ripping my GitHub colors this week with a newish logo shirt that I really like. And if you like it, you can get your own at githubshop.com because that's what YouTube people do, right? Like they tell you where to go get their merch. Another thing that YouTubers do is they tell you to like and subscribe the channel. So go ahead and do that right now, right now. All right, so the first piece of news that I wanna talk about is something from the GitHub side, and this is actually pretty huge. You can now insert math expressions in your Markdown documents on GitHub. And this has been a hugely requested feature with the first request going back something like eight years, and it's finally here. And mathematical expressions are an important way that data scientists and engineers and programmers and folks like that uh, that are better at math than me frequently use to share information. But the process of inserting those expressions into GitHub documentation hasn't really been very easy. And if you're curious what I mean by mathematical expressions, I'm going to ask Matt to insert the confused math lady GIF. Yes, I say GIF on the screen so that you can see what I mean. I'm also like memeing her now. All right, so if you wanna insert these expressions into your documents, uh, you can use the um, uh, dollar sign uh, delimiters to insert using tech or LaTeX in GitHub Markdown. And this is all powered by the MathJax library. And because it is using the standard syntax that math people use, it should be super simple to implement. I've got details in the show notes and the description about how all of this works, but uh, I know this is going to please so many people. Congrats to the team on making this happen. Next up, I wanna give a shout out to the GitHub and VS Code teams for releasing a new open source CLI for the new development container spec. And if you're not familiar, development containers or dev containers are a really easy way for users to get onboarded with a new dev environment using a Docker container. And using dev containers in either VS Code or uh, using the remote desktop extension or in GitHub code spaces, you can clone a repo and then have a Docker container set up in your IDE with all the dependencies that you need for that project ready to go. So you don't have to install anything, it's just gonna set itself up for you automatically. And this is all done uh, via a devcontainer.json file that sits inside your project. It's very slick and it's totally changed the way that I play around with new stuff. But the team has now opened up the CLI as a reference implementation so that individuals or other tools can read the metadata that's inside that devcontainer.json file and create dev containers from it. In other words, we could see even more types of tools adopting the dev container ecosystem, which frankly is great for everyone. So I've got more details linked below, but I love this. Moving on to some fun hardware hacks that I found on GitHub this week. A couple of members of the community have created incredible cyber decks using modern computer guts. And the first is from GitHub user Pink, and it is called the Mainboard Terminal and its design which is just incredible, features a five inch round 1080 by 1080 screen, and it's compatible with the OK, uh, OLKB uh, Prionic mechanical keyboard, which is super special and I'm not really familiar with, but it looks great. And the second is from GitHub user BrickBot, and it's called the Frame Deck, and it's a cyber deck that takes cues from the classic Trash 80 Model 100. Now, both of these use the framework main board, which we discussed a couple of weeks back as its base, and both GitHub repos, which are linked below, include the parts that these makers used, files for 3D printing, and build instructions. Well done, both of you. Speaking of retro-inspired hardware, I don't wanna brag or anything, but I finally got my play date. Now, if you're not familiar, the Playdate, which is this, is a new little retro console from my pals at Panic, and it's designed to play retro-inspired games, and it's also adorable, and it's yellow, and it has like this little crank on the side. Um, but beyond just the games from the indie game developers that are delivered to the Playdate on a weekly basis, there's this whole indie dev scene around the Playdate uh, too. And so in the show notes in the description, I've got a special list that I've created in my GitHub stars that highlights some of my favorite projects and resources around the Playdate. Now, fortunately, uh, the Playdate is not available for new buyers until sometime in 2023. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know how the supply chain can be, but you can start building stuff uh, with, uh, for the Playdate now without even having one. And if you do have one on order, you can indulge in the cool stuff that's coming out. And now it's time for my pick of the week. 
So when I was a kid, I was obsessed with two primary things, movies and the idea of making movies and uh, computers and video games. So way back in 1995, Microsoft had a CD-ROM for kids, just like me, called 3D Movie Maker, which was an application that let you create your own 3D worlds and movie sets. And you could then animate these worlds, you could control the lighting, you could add your own props, even background music. <laughs> It was the metaverse, but you know, like not cringe. So the application actually inspired a lot of future game developers and computer animators. And it was also the first application to give Comic Sans to the world. So thanks for that, I guess. But like so many classic pieces of software, it's been lost to time and it doesn't work well on modern hardware. So Twitter user and hardware slash software necromancer Foon Turing decided to ask if Microsoft would release the source code for the 3D Movie Maker so that the community could play with it and, and maybe get it uh, building and working on modern machines. Well, thanks to everyone's favorite developer, Scott Hanselman, and Jeff Wilcox, Fuan's request was answered. I felt that this was a really great uh, use of social media by Foon to say that, you know, I bet you you can't do that, Microsoft. Just give it to me, like you, you know. And I'm like, okay, well, why, why can't we? And even better, the author of the rendering engine that's used in the software that Microsoft had like originally licensed agreed to release the source code under the MIT license, which is just so cool. So earlier this month, Microsoft put the 3D Movie Maker source code on GitHub in a cleaned up but archived form, and Fuan, as well as members of the community have taken that code, they forked it to get it building on modern machines. The fork is called 3D MM Forever, and um, the first out of the box build was released this week. So I wanna thank you, Fuan, thank you, Scott, thank you, Jeff, and thank you to the entire 3D Movie Maker team from the 90s for making my childhood something special. What classic software projects would you like to see resurrected? Let me know in the comments down below, and also let me know your thoughts on any of our other stories. Quick programming note, both editor Matt and I will be out next week, so there won't be another episode for two weeks. Go ahead and give this video a like if you liked it, and be sure to subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for more great content. See you next time.